Welcome to our next installment of the Line Decker Line Lessons. I kind of took a break from this for a while just to um, take a breather and just look back at what I did in the previous two lessons. And I'm just trying to make, um, make my way through it um, to, to find a feel for how to approach this technique because it's a very definitive technique and a very definitive look and um, so I just wanted to take a breather and come back to it in a fresh way because I felt like I was getting burned out because I was working on way other stuff and I wasn't paying more attention to this because I really want to dedicate some time to learning line decker and learning his style and to incorporate it into my own style so the first two it was it was kind of learning the second one with the woman it really wasn't a line decker type drawing but I I found it very attractive. I just love the look, and and, I, and looking back, I feel like that uh, uh, I could have added a glaze to um, to the to painting, but I'm going to um, just leave it as it is. So with this one, I, I decided to do the the pilot, and I wanted to do something with folds and drapery and cloth, and and in this case, it's a scarf and a leather jacket. And I also wanted to um, approach the face because this is more of a typical line deck face as far as um, technique is concerned because there's a lot of lines, there's like a lot of little details, a lot of cross hatching. And it, it's more, it is more like drawing with your paintbrush rather than mixing and blending and, and um, getting that type of, a, of um, expectation out of the, the painting. So right now I'm using um, vine charcoal and just kind of working my th way through the drawing, making it my own. I, I really don't like tracing. I mean, I'd rather just, just make it my own and m more of my incorporated style into it. But, you know, everything I do, I, everything I do as far as the drawing is concerned is techniques I learned from drawing on the right side of the brain. It's a great book to, uh, to learn how to, to draw correctly and to draw from your right side, not your left side. So here I'm just taking taking my time and just trying to find um, a likeness because there, there's so many lines in this thing and it's just so, it's so difficult to, uh, to um, get it correct. So what I did was, um, between those transitions was I took um, some spray mount. Usually I take, um, I take the tester's um, dull coat because I find that's the best one to use. I mean, I'll have to do the spray at one time and it's it's sealed, you know. And I find that um, just regular um, fixative it takes multiple multiple times to to use, and I just rather use it once. And I don't I don't know how archival it is, but I, I like it. So, so here I'm using um, raw umber for my under, under painting. And I'm just going back over w what I did with the pencil, but I'm going to go in and do line, line work, almost like cross hatching. Now, I don't really have, you know, a set a set of brushes that I like to use. I just pick one and, and start using it, and if I like it, I'll keep using it. Um, and this is kind of like a, a really small, small flat, and they usually turn round after I'm done with them because I use them so much, and I, I really they, they go through a beating when I use them. But um, you'll see that I'm, I'll start incorporating that line and and in the um the folds and the anchor points of the folds and there you go there you see i do like a little bit of that that cross hatching technique and it comes in handy um especially when you go in with the paint when you actually go in with the actual painting and i think um i did this um 
in one sitting the the drawing and the underpainting and then I had to take a break there's so much there's a lot going on with this this jacket so I wanted to really take my time with it and uh, and not only do it correctly but have fun doing it because I'm learning that these are really fun fun drawings to learn from and I just love those folds I'm, I'm painting right there those triangles this triangle um, graphic uh, techniques Now, one thing I started to do was I thought it would be better to use like an ambient background uh, noise in this case I'm using the outdoor outdoor sound so, sounds to um, to give it kind of a relaxing feel you know I don't I really like to you know you come back and 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 listen to the the soothing sounds of of nature you know and I could just you know stop talking and and uh, and let let this happen but I really would like to kind of explain what I'm doing so you know maybe whoever's watching this would like to try try this technique so um, here I'm going in following the patterns of the jacket but and there's the belt and the shadow underneath the, the fold I'm doing these lines So here I started doing that cross hatching. There's lines, there's line decker lines, and um, just trying to figure out how he did it. You know, I'm thinking that he put the lines in first, and then he went in with like a glaze, and then started working um, the opacities up. Um, I could be wrong, but. Uh, I'm just um, trying to emulate what he's doing, looking at him because this one, if you look at this painting really, really close, there's a lot of cross, a lot of cross hatching going on, a lot of detail cross hatching, a lot of intricate cross hatching, and and here I'm, I'm trying to do that with the face. You can see I'm starting with the face because my intention was to um, to uh, do a lot of that detail. So this is the second day. This is um, the painting's dried. So now I'm adding more, more detail in the face, more cross hatching in the face because I believe this this painting is is more drawing than it is painting. So yeah, I'm really going in with that the, that cross hatching and trying to understand it and trying to understand um, the nature of it and the thinking behind it and just think you know this is. This is like the 1920s, the 1910s, you know, this is, you know, Leindecker created his own style, you know, that's so definitive, you know, and, you know, you can go back in, in the history books, read up on it, you know, in that great book that I've I, um, pointed out in the first video. Uh, and that's where I got this picture from. So now I'm going in, I'm starting with the black, I'm using ivory black, which is a blue. And I'm going in and trying to find, you know, he, he's not just filling it in, he's cross-hatching. He's just 
going in with line and cross hatching and not filling it in just like you know um, with one you know stroke or you know um, doing the jabbing or, or however you would call it so here I'm trying to look at what he's doing and trying to strategize how I'm going to, um, to execute this so what I'm thinking is I'm going to go in with black and then I'll go in with white which will turn into a, a bluish gray and then pull stuff out but there's I mean there's so much intricacies in the in this in this helmet that uh, I, I miss some of it but I capture I capture I capture the important parts of it Now as you see me working on this part of the painting, um, the paint's like really wet. So I'm, I'm using mineral spirits to, um, to water it down some so I can, I can move it around without it um, having like a dry brush effect to it. So um, it's, it's kind of hard for me to get those, um, those opaque lines so what I'm going to do is, once it dries, I'll go in and, and redefine some stuff. And here I'm just working on the goggles and uh, working on that fat over lean rule. Um, a fat oil will stick to a thin oil. So you lay down your thin, thin layer of oil, then you slap on top of that uh, some, some fat oil. And I'm really happy that I started this series because I'm, I just love Line Decker's work. I just love it. And, you know, anybody with eyes can see, you know, there's something wrong with them if they don't like this, these paintings, they don't like Line Decker. And here's like, um, I really like the way these goggles turned out. Um, they really came out real nice. And you can see the style is starting to show through the, just that the small portion of the painting, even though I didn't get all the details, you can still see um, the uh, the intent and the spirit of the of the uh, the style. So you can see right there, I just, I was testing to see if it was dry and it was. So what it was, was just some raw umber mixed in with some mineral spirits. And it's a, a fast drying um, uh, oil. So it, it's an alkyd. So you can, you can buy those, you know, in, on your local art stores. So now I have a, this flesh tone recipe that I had used for my prophetic art painting. So I still had that left over. So I was using th that, mix that mixture of those recipes, which is uh, white, um, red light, um, yellow ochre pale, um, cadmium red, raw umber, and black. And out of those, I mix an array of flesh tones all the way from high chroma light to low chroma darks. And then, um, you know, I'll mix in like a, a gray to gray it down if I need to. And uh, so, so now I'm utilizing that, those uh, cross hatching technique I use in the face and, and integrating it in with the color. And, you know, if, if you're lucky, you can, not make it look like a monster 
Um, but uh, that's the beauty of it. I mean, it's 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 almost like a creature when it starts out, but then you know, as soon as you find that sweet spot, it turns into something beautiful. I like how he separates that nose with the white. It separates those two elements. Um, it really makes the, the nose stand out. And uh, so I'm going, I'm going in with, um, I think it's Van Dyke Brown and Raw Umber. Those are my darks. And, uh, and you're just going in and just finding my way through it. And, and really having a good time with it and I hope you're having a good time with it too I hope you're enjoying what what I'm doing because without an audience you know I'm I'm only talking to myself so um, I really appreciate you watching this uh, yeah so I'm just having fun and being inspired and really like learning from it because you know this is not a normal way to approach a, a drawing you know and uh it's, it's, it's unique and special and it, and it should be celebrated, you know, and it should never be forgotten. I don't, I don't think that, uh, I don't think it, uh, it matters about a person's personal life. I just think, you know, that his work should stand, stand on its own two legs, you know, because he did have a turbulent life. And now I'm just punching out that that profile um, with some dirty way. I got some stuff going on. I got you know, didn't have a, a clean brush, but I, I can go back in with you know with a gray and just blend it in with that gray background because these are just studies. And uh, you know, just uh, um, sculpting that face. Now, I make a mistake. I'll show you what it is. I think I do it right there. Yeah, when I when I th when I put in that line, it just f flattens out everything. It just flattened it out. So I'm gonna go in with my thumb and and and, uh, and blend it out. And I use this stuff called Art Guard. I, I, I was on my hands. Um, you know, if I highly recommend it for oil painting to use this stuff called Art Art Guard or gloves because you don't want this stuff seeping in your hands. And Arc Art is like a cream. You, you put it, it's a cream, and then you rub your hands in it. And it, it has it like a really like a cheesy smell to it, but it uh, it would be nice if they put like a nice lemon scent into it or a nice, you know, vanilla scent, but that's okay. Uh, it protects your hands from the elements of the oils. And also use good ventilation too. If you're using, you know, um, cadmiums, I believe cadmiums have uh, metal in them. So now it's like the face is like almost done and I'm really happy with the way the face came out. I'm really impressed. All those lines, it, they just work. It just works and it's beautiful. And I'm so impressed with it. I'm so, I'm so happy with the way it's turning out because the last couple of uh, paintings I did, the first one was a learning process and the second one wasn't even kind of like a line decker style. But, um, this one is more of a line decker style. I'm, I want to be getting into more of like these paintings because this is a definitive line decker. This is like um, what he's known for is these types of, of lines.
Now I'm going in with a scarf. And the underpainting is going to help me create that texture of, of the, the cloth of the scarf because there's a lot of little textures going on that uh, and patterns that he has going on that um, um, are you know working with the underpainting and creating that that texture and depth um, with the with the cloth and it's it's very unique and it's very uh it's very satisfying to look at you know and, and now I'm really starting to get into that line decker um, style I hope you're enjoying watching this I mean I'm, I'm having a blast I really am um, and I'm going in with this uh, this patterns um, the white I said I think it's white with just a little bit of uh, Van Dyke Brown, I believe. I didn't. Um, I didn't fill myself with my uh, palette. And then there's 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 patterns. There's something like a Van a Van Gogh pattern. And then and now I I realized that I didn't have enough of the underpainting finish, so I'm going in and reestablishing that underpainting. And uh, you know it it'll still mix, but. It's the fat of Berline rule, so it'll stick. You know. Now there's this this diamond pattern in the scarf, um, and I didn't get it quite exact because the the paint was wet. So I think once the once the paint dries, and I can go in and reestablish that and get more crisper lines because it's hard to get crisp lines when you're working um, in Ella Prima. So um, that's a cadmium red. And so I'm just trying to um, follow the pattern, and you see they're just dots. You know, they're not they're not um, triangles or diamonds. I'm sorry, they're diamonds. And uh, so um, I plan on just going back and reestablishing that. And then he's got he's got lines inside those diamonds, and it's really hard to do that when the paint is like really wet. Now I'm going in with like a glaze of um, burnt sienna. It's like this reddish brown, and it, I think it really matches. It's, it matches the uh, um, the painting. So I'm just going in um, with a glaze, um, which it would be um, with some 
some mineral spirits. Also, I'm using a little bit of um, a linseed oil um, just to get the some of the dry paint on my palette that I used the day before um, smooth and flowing. And you know, you can get some nice effects with the wet on wet. Um, you just can't go in with like a lot, a lot of detail. But I'm really happy the way the the effects are are coming out. Um, it seems to be working. And I'm, I'm taking like each section and kind of approaching it as like a puzzle piece, you know, so I don't get too overwhelmed, you know. But at this point in the painting, you know, I'm, I'm kind of getting a little tired. Um, so I just kind of like film stuff in um, just like so to uh, turn off everything in my brain. So I just, you know, go into auto drive and um, just fill it in, just fill stuff in. But as you can see, the underpainting really helps as far as the textures and the des and the design of the um, the lines and the um, the intric intricacies of it. And there's a lot going on with this one flap. I mean, there's so much detail. And there's there's some grays in there. He's got grays in there, which is very um, educational for me um, because it cools, it cools it down and it breaks it up. And I believe it really gives it a nice look. But there's so much more of what I'm doing that he has in there. And you got to look at the original painting to really understand what I'm saying but um, you know sometimes it's hard to when you're doing a master copy to put the actual painting next to it because you know you don't you know it's not going to be that as good you know and you, but you want to show what you're, what you're working from so like I said it looks nice but he's got so much more going on in that flap that um, I really I'm really not getting. I believe at this this part of the painting, I'm kind of tired, and I'm, I don't think I can get, get go too much further. So I'm just kind of filling in parts of the painting, and I'm, I'm blocking in large shapes, just large shapes. And I believe I get this sleeve done. Um, but like like you can see, I'm not I'm not um, 
going in into small details. I'm going in with my darks with a, a fat brush and then pulling out highlights uh, with the uh, raw sienna. No, I'm, so, I'm sorry, the, the burnt sienna and and the white white mixture. And uh, I'm I'm trying to um, not rush because they, you know. When you start off fresh, you know, you 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 feel good and then you start getting tired. But it's when in those tired parts, those tired moments when you do your best work. And sometimes it's hard for me to get past those tired marks and I just wanna I wanna stop because I feel like I'm rushing the painting. All right, so now we're on to day three. The painting is dry to the touch, and now I'm able to go in with more detail, with more line work, I should say, and getting more crisper lines. And right now I'm using Van Dyke Brown, and I'm really understanding um, the technique more by understanding that everything is done with almost like a, a cross-hatching effect where lines intersect um, you have uh, the, those horizontal lines um, the graphic uh, the graphic design of the folds and so I'm just going in and um, appreciating the fact that the paint can dry and I can move on and, and and put more layers of color, more layers of lines, and I can uh, I can work um, without it sliding all over the place and mixing in now that it's dry. Um, I know that Line Decker, he his stuff almost dried immediately. I know that um, he um, he had a special uh, medium that he used. I remember reading something about Norman Rockwell. Um, I think after. Line Decker passed away. He gave uh, one of his his estate gave um, Norman Rockwell um, his medium, and Norman Rockwell said it would, he couldn't even use it because uh, it made everything slide all over the place. So I'm adding the white, adding adding details, adding highlights, and and really I'm um, enjoying enjoying what I'm doing, enjoying the painting, enjoying the uh, just the uh, the overall feel of the painting, getting into the cross hatching and getting into the designs and, and just kind of strategize how I'm going to, you know, get this effect. Cause you know, if, when you look at the original, there's, there's so much going on. It's just layers of, of lines, layers of colors, layers of, um, technique. So now I can go in and I add fine details to those those diamonds, those diamond shapes. I couldn't do that when I first laid those colors down. Um, I, I, you can't do this with wet on wet. You have to wait for it to dry. And so um, 
I was able to put those lines in. I was able to put those uh, those details in once the paint was dry. I couldn't wait to do that. That was my. I couldn't wait to do that because when when I was putting in those those diamonds in the first place, I was like, oh man, this stuff's so messy, so so off. But once it dried, I was able to go in and and tighten it up and then feel better about it. Now the painting is mostly finished, I'm just going in and um, punching out the background, uh, fixing up those, those, um, those lines. And, and here it was just a little too dark, so I had to wipe it away, and it was, a little, it was uh, too warm of a gray. I have a really cool gray in there, so I had to really um, fudge that around. And just trying to use that gray to erase lines, and so now I'm going in with the white and just doing a, a halo around the, the figure and then um, I'll go in and, and do that that cross hatching, that white out cross hatching that he does. I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, so, something like that, yeah. And then uh, just making those lines crispier. I really enjoyed doing this painting and if you like what you see, please consider subscribing because it helps a small YouTuber like myself get into the algorithm of the YouTube machine. Here goes. I'm going in with the cross hatching. That that cross hatching that he does so well, and um, I'm not sure if he did, he's the one who originated was the first one to do that kind of cross hatching, but it works and it gives it a nice feel. So 